today I posted a bicycle for sale on Facebook Marketplace here locally in Idaho Falls and we got a buyer. We're gonna sponge it off real quick. Brenly's getting his tail light off of it. And we're getting ready for the buyer to pick it up in about an hour. The bike we sold is... This was the bike Brentley rode to the office in Taipei for probably five years. Three anyway. So the buyer's coming to get it soon. Well, we sold the bike today. Maybe <laughs> shocking because we have so many bikes. Have you seen when we moved from Taipei, when we got our stuff here and we unloaded the bikes, we have lots of bikes, maybe too many. One of the bikes I used exclusively to commute when I was in Taipei, from our apartment to the office and back. And when we moved here, actually a year ago, when everything shut down because of COVID and it was work from home, I stopped using it and I actually didn't ride it hardly at all. Then we moved here, again, work from home, I don't need it anymore. There's another reason I don't need a commuter bike anymore. Now you really don't need I it. I really don't. I promise you, <laughs> I will never ever commute to work on a bicycle again. It's not because I hate bicycles. It's not because we bought Franklin. It's because on April 23rd, I retired. Happy this, retirement. This is the retirement tree. <laughs> Happy retirement. Yay. Off the clock. I'm done. Happy retirement, Brentley. All done. Had a great career. Met a lot of people. Did a lot of great things. But it's time to move on. It's time to move on to buses, bikes, and beers. <laughs> so that's what we're going to be doing from now on. We thought we'd give you guys an update at Frank's place. We did a video earlier where we talked about some of the projects that we're starting, including this cleat wall which we've made a little bit of progress on. I've made various holders for various things. I got big plans for this. I'm gonna put more of these walls in various places because I love the flexibility, but all of this stuff on this table, uh, well, most of this stuff anyway, will either get put away here or on the cleat wall. This table is something I made. This is a project that's 90% complete, but it's basically a uh, a, a table for doing projects, assembly work. Uh, I put some drawers, I built some drawers for it. Uh, the table saw, this table saw will ultimately go on the end. This will be an outfeed table for long stock as I rip it, et cetera, et cetera. It's very, very stiff and strong the way I built it. Um, I'm gonna have T-Track, blah, blah, blah. You'll see that as I continue to make progress on it, but it's about 90% complete. But the, the rest of Frank's place, still a mess. All of that in that corner is for the yard sale. We're gonna have the world's biggest yard sale. All of that stuff is stuff that we sorted through either at dad's house or our own stuff that we moved up from Texas. It's all gotta get sorted. So most of this stuff will be cleared out as we go to the yard sale. We'll continue to clear out this this will ultimately this will all be open for storage of whatever my dad's boat a car or two whatever uh but uh yeah we're making progress and we as we've been organizing this place we realized that i have a bunch of raw materials that i bought from a cabinet shop we wanted to get that up off the floor it takes a lot of floor space so we have been hanging these things these shelves suspended from the ceiling and we're loading them up with the material we have two more to install we think our compressor just died we think our air compressor just died yeah that we may have to have a funeral for it so Brentley is installing uh, loft number two. We have a total of three purchased. We're hoping it will hold all of the raw material we have here at Frank's place. Okay, 
Yeah, we think that this has died. We'll see what noise it makes. Well, it wasn't a good one. So that gets that material up off the floor, um, and I can use it for projects. All of this, all of this pile, plus some other boxes over there, are Corvair parts. These are parts from various years and models of the Chevrolet Corvair. Cars we've been collecting, Mary Beth and I have been collecting for years, and we're going to sort through this stuff, keep the good stuff that we need for either one of the two Corvairs that we have, the rest of it will be sold and or given away or whatever. But yeah, we're making uh, we're making progress here at Frank's Place. We've talked about Frank's Place. We did a video, like I said earlier, about some of the projects we've started here. But it occurs to us that perhaps it might be confusing if you don't really understand what Frank's Place is. So. This part of Frank's Place, Frank's Place is divided into two sections with a, with a full wall and a door insulated wall between the two sections. The section we're in now, where we hung up the wood storage, where the cleat wall is, where the assembly table is, that's, that has historically just been used to store cars. We moved all of our junk in it as we're sorting through it. Long term, this is where we will uh, potentially build a, this is potentially where we'll build the Sprinter van. It's where we'll do, maybe do the Carmen Ghia conversion in this part of the shop, but this will be a big open area. Maybe store stuff. My dad has a boat. We have extra cars between my dad and us and whatever. So that's what this will be. But this area is where we, this half of the shop at Frank's place is where we quarantined. When we first moved back from Taiwan, this is where the car Magia, the van is. This is where we built the Apollos. So this part of it will, uh, will be for some auto work, keeping the Corvairs running, keeping the van, the Corvair van running. Uh, we love the Corvair van, but it isn't really a van you can live in permanently. It's not really, a, uh, it's not a tiny home. It's not a replacement for an adventure vehicle sprinter. We will use it, we love it. Uh, We'll be taking some adventures in it, but we're not planning on living in it for a long periods of time. But we'll never get rid of it. There's an office in the office. You may have seen us in the office. We start some rides over here. That's right there. And this is the office of Frank's place. It's a mess. <laughs> yeah. All of Frank's place is a mess. As we try to get it organized, it won't be this way forever, but for now, it's a work in progress. The goal, now that I'm retired, we're gonna work here uh, pretty frequently, likely daily unless we got a ride to do or something like that, but we're gonna get this place cleaned up, organized. Part of the reason we need to get this all organized, set up to a point where we know where all the tools are, it's, uh, we've got lots of floor space, it's open, it's organized, is because this will be the home base where we build our next vehicle, our next adventure vehicle, which is the buses part of buses, bikes, and beers. And we haven't really decided what that is. For a long time, we thought it was going to be a 40 foot school bus. Then we looked at, as we worked through layouts and thought about it, then we thought about a 32 foot school bus. And more recently, we've been actually thinking about a, an extended high roof, an extended high roof sprinter van. We don't know. We're working on floor plans for each three of those options. We don't know which we're gonna choose. We'll show you some of those CAD models, those floor plans. Maybe some of you have suggestions. Maybe you guys have input on what might be better. There's distinct advantages and disadvantages of uh, 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 you know, the nimbleness and agility of a Sprinter van sort of go anywhere versus the relative comfort and luxury of a 40 foot school bus conversion. So we don't know, whatever. This will be home base. This is where we will build it, but we got to get it set up because you can't, uh, you know, I can't imagine trying to do a build like that and I can't find a tool. So I got to get this place organized. I know where all the tools are, all this, all this stuff set up so that we can focus on the build. No matter what we do, you guys are going to come along. 
we're going to post videos of the entire build, however long that takes, hopefully, uh, and with some bikes and beers mixed in. Yeah, but for now, let's, let's show you a couple of the floor plans we've been thinking about. First, let's look at the layout for a 40-foot bus, which is based on a rear-engine bus platform, preferably an activity bus with lots of undercarriage storage. Our plan would be to raise the roof by about 16 inches to create more interior space. I'll remove the top so we can see inside. Starting in the front of the bus, just behind the entry door and driver station, is a couch with three slide-out sections to form ottomans for lounging, or if all three are pulled out, a guest bed. Across from the couch, on the driver's side, there is a dinette area with fold-away benches and a removable and storable table. Also integrated into the dinette cabinet is a pop-up 42-inch TV. When the dinette is folded and put away, there's lots of floor space in this area of the bus. Moving back, there's a large kitchen with an L-shaped counter featuring a dual compartment sink, drying rack, and a large household refrigerator. Across from the sink and fridge is a 20-inch apartment-style propane range, vent hood, and microwave. The kitchen has plenty of drawers and cabinet storage. It also has a slide-out pantry. A wall with a custom pocket door separates the front and rear areas of the bus, and just on the other side is the bathroom and laundry area. The laundry area has a bathroom sink and vanity, as well as an area for a combo washer dryer and lots of storage. There's a sliding door on the bathroom which contains a nature's head composting toilet and a shower. Moving back, you step up onto a raised floor which hides the rear wheel wells and an area for battery and water storage. The bedroom area has tons of closets and storage as well as a small utility closet to house the solar controllers, inverter, water heater, and other utilities. In the back above the engine is the bed. So this is the layout that we've refined for a 40-foot bus. This is also the design that we've put the most thought and time into. It's a really nice design with lots of space and amenities, but a 40-foot bus is a very large vehicle and will restrict us on where we can take it, which is why we decided to see what we could do with a 32-foot bus. For this version, I used the same CAD model of the 40-foot bus, but added a rear wall at the 32-foot mark. So while reviewing this, just ignore what's behind this white rear wall and pretend that that's the back of the bus. The front of this layout is exactly the same as the 40-foot layout, with the couch and the fold-away dinette and TV cabinet. We saved some space in the kitchen by eliminating the L-shaped counter and using an L-shaped kitchen layout. Same sink, 20-inch range fridge as before, but this layout has slightly less storage. Again, a wall separates the front and back areas with a custom pocket door, behind which is a side hallway with a combo washer and dryer and some closets. The bed is again above the engine with some underbed storage, and the bathroom is off the bedroom through the same sliding door as before with a nature's head composting toilet and a shower. There is also a utility closet for the solar charge controllers, inverter, water heater, and other equipment with a planned external access door. The 32-foot layout has all the same amenities as the larger 40-foot layout, but with less storage. After we finished this layout, we pretty much concluded this was the better bus layout for us since the 32-foot vehicle would be less restrictive and have access to more places. The third option we are considering is a 170-inch wheelbase Mercedes Sprinter van with the extended body and high roof. We recently started evaluating this option, so the CAD model isn't very refined yet, but we are honing in on a layout with a small dinette behind a swiveling driver's seat. The dinette will also convert to a couch. There's a small galley kitchen on the passenger side with a 17-inch propane stove and oven. The bed would be in the back with a garage under, typical of minivan layouts. 
One idea we've been working on is putting the composting toilet on a drawer so it could be easily tucked away when it was time to shower. As you can see, there are a lot of details to work out, but so far we think it's worth putting some more time and thought into a van layout before we make our final base vehicle decision. So those are the three options that we're considering uh, as we think about building our future home. We're super excited now that I'm retired that we're going to get started on this next phase of our lives where we build our future home and we can go out, travel around the U.S., ride our bikes, find craft beer, and bring you guys along with us. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.